You've heard me talk a lot before about the lipid energy model, which is that many going on a low-carb diet observe their cholesterol levels rise and through a series of experiments, myself and many others have helped find connections between metabolic changes and cholesterol levels. I have and continue to hypothesize these cholesterol levels are highly influenced by the trafficking of fat around the body in lipoproteins, the boats your body makes. So I'm going to start this off with a pretty funny question. What can this bag teach us about fat storage? Of course, you know you're looking right now at a mesh bag full of golf balls. What if you couldn't open or close this bag? But what if you could break the balls apart to small enough pieces to get through the mesh holes? If you could, then, then you'd have some idea on how fat-based storage works. So let me introduce you to triglycerides. This is the storage form of fat-based fuel, commonly found in adipocytes and lipoproteins. And it's big, it's bulky, so it stays within membranes really well. Now, when it's time for you to go ahead and take them out, with the help of some enzymes, you break them apart process called deesterification, and now they can fit through the membrane, which is great. I want you to know what these, con these constituent components are because they're going to be very relevant to this larger story. It's glycerol and free fatty acids. So glycerol is a simple polyol compound. It's very soluble in the bloodstream, so it mixes in well. It travels easily and it's commonly used by the liver to generate glucose, a process known as gluconeogenesis. And then there's free fatty acids. This is the free form of fat-based fuel, and it's very insoluble in water, so it's commonly found um, attached to albumin, a very, a very prominent protein in the bloodstream. And this small molecule can easily slip through membranes. And what's happening over and over again is these two are being converted back and forth to each other, triglycerides being deesterified into glycerol and free fatty acids, and then both of those being uh, reesterified back into triglycerides to get inside of membranes and uh, remain there because that's, again, the, the storage form of fat. So with that in mind, let's talk about the lipid energy model. On the left side, we've got body fat. Just imagine it's all the body fat. And on the right side, we have the liver. And in the middle, we've got tissues in need. And think of this in the context of you're moving from a mixed diet or a carb-centric diet to a low-carb diet. So we leave it with this. When healthy and going on a low-carb diet, we hypothesize that a higher continual release of free fatty acids from adipocytes, those are your fat cells, can provide those fatty acids to tissues in need. This makes sense because as you're losing weight and you need to draw on those fatty acids, that's where you can get them from. But also, there's a higher uptake of free fatty acids by the liver. And that's important because they can break down those fatty acids for higher production of ketone bodies. This is a process known as ketogenesis. And everything I've just now showed you it's not controversial. Everyone agrees on it. There's really no debate. Uh, the next part's going to get a bit trickier. What we posit is that actually there's a higher re-esterification of triglycerides in the liver, as in these free fatty acids are now being recomposed into triglyceride cargo. And now there's a higher secretion of this triglyceride cargo on board lipoproteins particularly VLDLs. This in turn results in greater direct supply of VLDL to both adipose and non-adipose tissues. Further, there's higher turnover of these VLDL and delivering this triglyceride cargo to these tissues. And then there's the final money shot, which is that this has a higher resulting number of LDL particles. So those VLDLs that are leaving, just you know, bloated with these triglycerides, they're dropping off their cargo very rapidly. There's just this high turnover. And what do you call a VLDL 
that's been relieved of all of its triglyceride cargo? Well, it's an LDL, full stop. This, however, is controversial. This process and all of its parts are something that there's quite a lot of debating uh, with me and many others, not just outside the low carb community, but also inside the low carb community. And it's good, it's healthy. So now we have to look for clues for each of these steps. And that's a lot of what we're doing now. We're putting together the paper, looking for all of the research beyond just what we've been able to do with our own experiments that can either help confirm or disconfirm this model.